welcome to another episode of Literary Gladiators, the show where we discuss and debate literature in all of its forms. If it's written work, it's game. Let's meet the panel. Hi, I'm Larry. I'm Ari. I'm Tori. And I'm Josh. And today we are going to be going over a short story that Ari suggested called The Fun They Had by Isaac Asimov. And I swore that I read it during reading class when I was in middle school. Oh, My yeah, mom is actually the one who recommended this one. Oh, your mom did? Um, she, we, we were just talking about Asimov one day, and I said, well, do you know any good short stories by Asimov? She mentioned this one, so oh, okay. I went off and read it, and I said, okay, yeah, we can do this one. And it's very, uh, it's especially eerie for this point in time. Yeah, it's yes. really odd. Considering it was really made like 50 years ago, the whole story. Mm -hmm. Yes. Do yeah. uh, you have a discussion starter you want to kick off with? Um, I didn't really have a particular question I wanted to ask. I kind of had a topic I wanted to begin on, so I guess that's my starter. Um, but, like, I guess if I wanted to f phrase it in the form of a question, it'd be like, what do you think, you know, do you think that this future of having, you know, the, the, the schools be kind of run in a way by, you know, like not by human beings anymore and that, all that kind of stuff, do you think that's actually feasible? Do you think I that's think now more than ever it's becoming more possible. I don't know necessarily by human beings, uh, or I think human beings have to have some kind of involvement. Yeah, is it possible? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Is it going to ever happen? I don't think so. Mm. I really don't think so. Do you so. think something will prevent it from happening? Human, just human contact. I think at the end of the day, if you look at it, like, there's a whole chunk, I guess is the better word of it, of education that, like, when you look at it, the human aspect of the interaction between an adult and, and, and the, you know, students, it's highly necessary. It's as long as we do things properly, yes. I feel that what's kind of going on with the quarantine right now digitally, I think is a good example of what, why I'm actually going to agree with you. Exactly. Um, that's I, mean, exactly. I know, I know yeah. a lot of people yeah. might have thought that because I suggested this that I was going to disagree and say no, no this is definitely something that I happened. I would think because you are in such an educated, like you mm -hmm. would be the perfect example of why the, the robot in the room next to the girl's bedroom is the The fact least that like all four plausible. of us and, you know, Dominica mm. and all of us are here right now, like we're discussing this in mm -hmm. person. And, and I even, think it's much even during I, the I agree. Time right so much now, better, yes. Like I have noticed that the more I text, the more I message, the more I Facebook, and Josh, mm -hmm. you would know this probably more than anyone here, I just it gets very frustrating because I can't mm -hmm. feel the emotion. Humans the are yes. social creatures. We have been social creatures as far back as the dawn of time. Yeah. We have been wired to need interaction. Like they say that a, a human so, will die without... Social interaction. Yeah, that's not, what I mean. No, 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 no. That's what I'm saying. Social interaction. Like I think there's a statistic out there of um, a human needs as, as little as four hugs a day. You know, physical contact mm. is so important. But the, but the kids are talking with one another, and mm -hmm. they're learning more talking with one another about this physical book that they found in this attic yeah. than the girl is with the robot. With the robot, yeah. Yeah, which is Melvin. Which, which is exactly where I wanted to, where I was going to go next. Jump right ahead of me. Let's hear it. from Larry. Yeah, it's what you do. I just wanted to mention, because you guys are talking about Zoom, <laughs> and uh, one of the shortcomings of things like Zoom and FaceTime and stuff like that is that it's impossible to make FaceTime or uh, eye contact with the person that you're talking to. It's mm -hmm. very As you're talking mm -hmm. to them, it's yeah. impossible. And you have to look at the camera like, in exactly. order for it to appear that you're giving eye contact. I mean, our, our mm -hmm. discussions But then are you're not looking at the eyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, the only like, way they could fix that is if, like, everyone's eyes suddenly became cameras. Or yeah, yeah, you just yeah. see yeah. yeah. Something that just the a, a in the, in the that screen so were weird. also yeah, by cameras. Because I had contemplated, I had put Zoom on the table uh, as an option, but I think then from a a health standpoint, yeah, like right now we're not looking at our audience; we're looking at the camera. Yeah, well, even that's, though we know, and our that's what I was going to say is, is, from a health standpoint, we love you. It's good, yeah. but uh, from yeah. from a from a, a technical technical was, standpoint, yeah, it's yeah, fine, whatever. It was, but it still allows us to discuss. Yes, you know, um, we just don't get the chance to be able to interact yes. in this way. Mm -hmm. Something that I wanted to say back to the the eye contact thing. We're talking, and I, whenever I can tell you when we started this, we didn't have somebody behind the camera. And now that we have somebody behind the camera, there's a body to talk to, which represents almost the audience. And whenever we have somebody mm. in the room doing that, I can tell you for certain, the person at the end at some point or another in between takes is like, oh, I didn't think about this, or oh, I never thought about reading this book until I listened to you. So having a person there, it helps. You know, you need to have a human and you need to have a face. It also allows me I to think do you're, I, think you're, I think you're due for a his, uh, literary gladiator's history lesson. Uh-oh. 
we did have a person behind the camera. Okay, so let me rephrase. Let me edit myself. I apologize. <laughs> edit yourself. <laughs> Correction corner. In the beginning of when I was, you know, filming stuff with you yes. guys, there was very rarely somebody behind the, the mm -hmm. camera. But I digress. Yes. Eye contact is such a, a huge mm -hmm. aspect of human interaction that, you know, putting a robot in somebody in front of somebody, they're mm -hmm. going to tune in out because it doesn't matter at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know. And, our, and I think our goal is to be able to overcome hardships like the ones that we're dealing with. We can adapt for until a solution comes forth, but that's the reason I hate the term new normal. Do you want to do you want to know something? This is I only temporary. The other thing is with teachers, like you were saying, like at, this is a temporary fix. I don't think that technology should at the end of the day mm. teach children. Um, I think mm. maybe there might be a hybrid in the future. But there's there's no amount of AI you can slap in or a computer that is going to really be able to yeah. diagnose just kind of like nurses. Yeah. You can't di you can't have a computer diagnose a person. There needs to be a human that understands yeah. humanity to be able to help guide and, and better. Change. I mean, ro robots, computers, they can do simple tasks. But if you know, um, uh, just to give you a this is a, a weird, a little bit off, but it is still related. I don't know if you guys know what Deep Blue is. But Deep Blue was a computer where he mm -hmm. they played chess with uh, one of the best chess oh. answers. Yeah, you can mm -hmm. teach it a complex theory, but it's not going to be able right. to it's look at Yeah, it doesn't yes. have the ability to diagnose somebody or, mm -hmm. or it, quick, exactly. quick think and, and, and... I can't think. imagine being a robot that's a like teacher. With, that's like with it doctors, too, where they think a, a doctor can only do so much online. Um, it's like, for instance, like, Josh, you asked me a really complicated question, and I'll just go, uh, uh, Can I compute? <laughs> <laughs> A Sorry. human, so there's no amount of like, you, mm. we will never be able to understand a robot because a, a robot understanding itself will never actually happen. And mm. the, the. I think what you're saying right now would confuse the robot. <laughs> precisely. Precisely. So, like, mm. being able to understand how would a, a child think, mm. you can put as much if thens and ones and zeros into a computer program. Will there be a computer one day that will and be able to. And any computer that is designed would probably be designed by the morality of the person who made it. Mm. Which means since everyone Aside from that, we could yeah. go into so many tangents. Well, Let's get back to the, the story so itself. The story. Uh, mm -hmm. One thing I found <laughs> interesting story. was the uh, the concept of physical books because okay. that always oh. interests me. I the, hate when people bring that kind of stuff up in there. But continue, sorry. You mean oh, in in what way? When when uh -oh. you have people who are like, this children is a physical book. I don't know. I just oh, as, as a millennial, because, like I understand what a book is, and then next the next time somebody cracks I think that, that joke, I, I think it's important it. for people to know and to appreciate or at least acknowledge the importance of a physical book. Yes, because I uh, the quote that I have here, uh, I think that Asimov hit the nail on the head when it came to uh, describing the e-reader. Uh, our television screen must have had a million books on it, and it's good for plenty more. I wouldn't throw it away. That's pretty much a non-handheld -hand e e-reader. Uh, but the one that really got That's me... basically this room on one screen. Mm. And, like, there's something about this room that just makes it, like, a mm. library. Just having mm. a screen in front of you, that doesn't really feel like a library. It doesn't feel like no. a place you can sit in. But there are some people who, like... Mm. They were born and raised with tablets in their hands. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So like there are the you know um, what is it the Generation X what is what is below us? You mean Generation Z? I don't know. Yeah, I I'm an old person. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. X is the one that's above us. So oh Z. Okay. But like there are some people mm -hmm. who like, like don't. Your ex, right? The the save yeah. icon on the computer doesn't mean anything to them. But like mm -hmm. physical books are always going to be. Yeah. Good, I think. The, yeah. Another quote. They turned the pages, which were yellow and crinkly, and it was awfully funny to read words that stood still instead of moving the way they were supposed to. <laughs> on the screen, you know. That, that was... And yeah. then, when they turned back to the page before, it had the same words on it that it had mm -hmm. when they read it the first time. They're laughing now, but when words stand still, uh, so do facts. Yeah, that's a fair yeah. point. That's a very good point. Because of the one thing that really is engraved in my mind is Fahrenheit 451, when they talked about the way that they rewrote history. Benjamin Franklin re uh, invented the fire uh, the fire department, but in that history, it always was used to burn books. 
we are seeing a lot nowadays so, online where it's yes. kind of like you were saying words staying still facts stay still mm -hmm. we are unfortunately seeing online some yeah i can't even uh, bear social to... media representation of something like that happening just yeah. the so, news in general it's just I've, I've, so I've, stressful I've, i can't stand the news right now i'm just just yeah. not even they 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 change their tune so often and that's why it's so important yeah. to pay attention and and really critically think about what you are reading mm. um and what Moving sort of information away. that you are mm. you are consuming and and spreading and the source and the source absolutely i, I want to go and and i'm going to say a quote from a movie and i'm going to explain why why it's relevant to what we're saying right now if you've ever seen inside out Right. Okay, so I'm so trying the, to follow this. There is a quote in there where um, I think Joy knocks a bunch of blocks over and says, oh, these facts and opinions will look so similar. And so I want to bring that back here for a second to the uh, about moving facts and stationary mm. facts. Like, when things are moving so fast, of course, like, it's going to be harder to figure out. And altering out. facts, too. And altering facts. Well. And of course, it's going to be harder to figure out which is mm. fact, which is opinion, which is real, which is fake. When you read a book and like, and, or read anything mm -hmm. in like a dictionary. Or, no, I... The, another reason why books are sometimes feared is because exactly that point mm. is that the words are immovable and the facts are unchangeable. In, mm. um, so there are some books that like are mm -hmm. on children's reading lists that are, mm -hmm. are burned. Like Harry Potter books were like burned because certain people were afraid of I, those I words. Especially when the source is objective. Exactly. Um, here it was just a story and I think this is what makes this this mm -hmm. little piece so profound is it was a mundane everyday Mm -hmm. Life of uh, students in a classroom. It, 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 it felt like something that definitely could have happened in like 400 years or something. Mm. You want to say something, Larry? No, it could be as close. It could be closer than that. Mm. I, mean, I think there's a push for this kind of thing. I think there they, is, but I don't think we can ever mm. get there. No, it's, it's all going to depend on whether or not. Uh, I I'm very optimistic that we will find a uh, a Happy cure. Balance. Yeah, I, I will find solutions for. Current circumstances. Oh, I'm not. I'm not just yes. talking about like this present yes. situation. I'm saying like a long projected. Yes, we, there is a push towards yes. a lot of technology in the classroom. I think because they mm -hmm. think of it as yes. a a good source of mm -hmm. like anything is at your fingertips, mm -hmm. so I can mm -hmm. understand. But I don't think at mm -hmm. the end of the day you can replace a human but being yeah. able to give that. I agree with that. I think that. having books in print is also for the historical aspect of. Mm -hmm. I think that is. I think we're going to have a lot of challenges to the general way of doing things in the years to come but i also am optimistic that we also that we will be able to respond to them properly and i think that it's going to take uh just people believing in one another and uh getting see, over ourselves yes. and understanding that we are all far more similar than we actually realize. Mm -hmm. yes but also far say. more different in a good way mm -hmm. Embracing our differences. Yeah, yes. that's embracing I mean. those yeah. differences, but understanding that they all come from a very similar place. Mm -hmm. Yep. Alrighty then. Do we have any final thoughts? I think Mom suggested a good story. Yeah, I think it, it mm -hmm. does its job, and it does its job pretty mm -hmm. well. And it's very, um, you know, I mean, it's fun. not. It's there are other short stories that, and also novels that Isaac Asimov has done, um, mm -hmm. including Foundation and mm -hmm. uh, the Foundation trilogy, and. Um, uh, I believe he did I Robot too, as Larry yes. was mentioning earlier. That's his most noteworthy. Mm -hmm. But I think just looking at his short stories, it kind of shows mm -hmm. just. Um, I think it just shows how much knowledge he was able to. Well, how he was able to guess. Mm -hmm. yeah, guess what the future. It's a good little goes. bite sized mm -hmm. nugget of like a really philosophical question. But at the same mm -hmm. time of being a guess, it's also a reminder. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. Yeah. yeah. And your mom is also a very devout follower of our, our show and our endeavors. Uh, she was on the show, remember? Yep, she? she did My Name is Astro Lev. Right. Uh, cool. And uh, that was when Danielle, uh, from This is Danielle, was on the panel as a special guest. Yeah. Uh, but I also fondly remember when uh, we just reached a thousand subscribers and I came, and it was right, right after that I came over to drop off a flash drive to your house and uh, your mother had uh, specifically congratulated me in person on our, our, our accomplishment. Those kind of things I remember. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, if you're interested in checking out uh, The Fun They Had by Isaac Asimov, uh, there should be uh, particular anthologies in which you can find them. Uh, but 
I'm going to leave a link down below to the PDF where I found it. I was it. just about to say, you Google it, and it's like one of the first things that pop up yeah. is a free mm -hmm. PDF that you can find. There are a couple it's free pages. Yeah, if you it's want an actual free. book, uh, there are a couple collections uh, out there. Um, I don't know the names of them, but they're definitely out there. Yeah, I'm kind of hypocritical when I say that a lot of the stuff that I read from here I do on ebook and on. Yeah. I know it's bad and I hate it. I despise oh, the fact that I have to do tori, that. Tori, tori. But if, if I, there, we read a lot, and and you know I can think of. I've already got the laundry list of stuff that I know. Once I have my own place, like I'm physically getting copies of because I want to reread them again and, mm. and enjoy it far more with that physical book. Um, I, have a I know. No, 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 no. That's the one thing that I, I'm not going to be getting. But. That's the one book. That's the one book I'm not getting. <laughs> Be sure to join us next time on another episode of Literary Gladiators. For now, keep reading. Keep reading and keep having fun. Remember, books are your friends. Right. Hi, everybody. This is Jesse from Literary Gladiators, and next time we will be discussing The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien. Please join uh, Dan, Josh, Kayla, and I for that wonderful discussion. It's very exciting. And don't forget to support us on Patreon. And... Keep reading.